In a recent tutorial, I described a simple project management setup and Git workflow that you could implement for your own applications. So if you want details on how to set up this workflow and why it might be a good idea, I'll link to the article for you to check out. But this video is just going to be a quick overview of using that workflow. So the key feature of this process is the Kanban board that we are looking at right now. And this is what we are primarily going to use to organize our work. Now, if you've never used Kanban before, you've probably seen this style of project management before. We just have these columns or lanes that we use and we can move things between these lanes or columns as we complete them or they're at different stages of their life cycle. So what we have set up here is that any issue we add to this project is going to be automatically pulled into this project here and it's going to be added to the backlog column. We will then sort this backlog by the priority of the items. So the more important items or the items we want to work on sooner are going to be pushed towards the top of this backlog. And then we are going to pull in items that we are working on from the backlog into the other columns. So I highly recommend checking out the tutorial that I will link for much more detail about what this is all about, why we're doing it. Uh, but in general, this is an agile style process. It uses a, a kind of scrum, kind of Kanban style approach. But one of the key ideas is that we are able to do quick incremental releases of the software and our main branch is going to always or nearly always be in a clean releasable state. So again, I'm not going to go through how to set this up in this video. Uh, you have to go check out the tutorial for that because there's quite a few steps involved in the initial setup. We are just going to walk through a specific example now of what it looks like to use this workflow. And we're going to use the TDD approach or test-driven development. You don't need to use test-driven development for this approach. Your boards here just might look a bit different and the process in general might have some minor changes. So. If you wanted to write your tests after coding instead of before, you might just switch these two columns around. And of course, you don't have to use tests at all if you don't want to, but it is a good idea to include them. Okay, so what we're going to do is start off by adding a new issue. So this is part of the process we have set up. Any new features that we want to work on, even if they're just bug fixes or a simple config bump, everything gets added as a new issue. And that is what we will start new work from. So this is just a dummy project. Uh, I'm just going to add a silly requirement here. So let's say that we want to add a goodbye message to the home page because in the tutorial I added a hello message. So it's going to make sense for us to add a goodbye as well. We want to be polite, right? So we're going to create a new issue and we're going to describe the requirement. Generally, these are going to be in the structure of user stories, but we're not going to write it as a, a formal user story right now. So we'll just call this issue add goodbye message. And so what we can do is if we click this project setting icon here, we can manually add that to our Kanban board, but we also have a GitHub action set up in case we forget to do that. So what I'm going to do is not add it to the board and just submit this new issue. And what's going to happen is you'll see this action here is going to run. You see it's queued now, and this is going to take about maybe 30 seconds or so to actually complete. So in general, if you want that available in the Kanban board right away. It's better just to add it manually, but it's good to have this action here in case we miss adding something. If someone adds a new issue and forgets to add it to the project, then that issue might just go unnoticed and nobody will know about it because this is primarily where we're working from and where we're generating our new work from. Okay, so it's in the backlog now. The issue has been added here, it's at the top. Uh, since it's what we want to work on right now, we're going to keep it at the top there. Uh, but if this wasn't important, say this is just a very low priority item that we don't care about working on right now, then we might sort that somewhere further down this list so it's not addressed as soon. But we do want to work on it, so it's going to be at the top. And then what we're going to do is pull in that from the backlog into the test column. So now we are officially working on this item. So I'm not going to go into a deep dive into the whole test driven development methodology here. I'll link to some additional resources uh, for that if you want to learn more about TDD. But with TDD, we are going to write our test first before we write our code. So now that this is in the test column and we know what we want to uh, 
what feature we want to create here, we're going to start doing some actual coding. So the first thing we want to do is add a test for this new feature, but we aren't just going to add it straight to our main branch. If I run git status, you'll see that I'm currently on the main branch for the project. But what we're doing is something called a branch per issue or a task branching approach. And basically we're going to create a new branch for every single issue that we work on. And each issue is going to be a reasonably small and isolated chunk of work. So the idea is that we're branching, but we're also merging that back into the main branch pretty quickly. We're not gonna have features living off in their own branch that sit there for long periods of time. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure first that we are on the main branch or the master branch. We know that we are because I just showed you with git status, but in general to do that, you'll run git checkout main, uh, if that is what your main branch is called. And then we're going to run git pull to make sure that we have the latest version of that. Now we're going to create our new branch off of that main branch. So we're going to say git checkout dash B to create a new branch. And we're going to use some kind of consistent naming structure for this. Uh, I'm just using my initials JM dash. And then we are going to use the number of the issue as the branch name here. So this will be JM dash 11. And you can use whatever kind of naming structure you want or that makes sense to you or your team. Uh, but the good thing about something like this is we can easily see that it's it's Josh Maroney who worked on this and he's working on issue number 11. So we've created that new branch now and we've switched to it. So now any work we do in the code is going to live on that branch. So now it is time to add our test. So I'm going to come into the Cypress folder here. Again, I'm not going to talk about how to do tests or test driven development in this tutorial. I'll link to a separate resource for that. So I would just come into this integration folder here, open up my test file. This is just an extremely simple, uh, simple Cypress setup. Typically we would have a more structured approach to our tests, but we're just gonna dump another test in here for the goodbye message, which unsurprisingly is going to be exactly the same pretty much as the, uh, the first test here. We are just going to change it to contains goodbye message. And I'll make sure I add a new line there to stop that from complaining. We're going to visit the uh, root URL and we're going to check that the page contains the text goodbye somewhere. So we'll save that. And an important part of the testing process is making sure that this test that we have written actually fails first, because we certainly don't want it to pass before we've even added the code. So we'll just run npm run e2e. And now we have the application built and Cypress has launched the app that we can use to run our specs. So we will just run that one spec file that we have. And you can see we've got our two, two tests there. So the first one passed, that's one I have already implemented. We have a hello message on the screen, but the second test that we just added is going to fail. It says contains goodbye message. And obviously we don't have goodbye anywhere on the page. So we have a failing test, which is exactly what we want. So what we're gonna do at this stage is now push that code back to our remote repository in its new branch. So we are, well first we can always just run git status to see what's changed. So we're just gonna commit our new test file back. So we'll run git add all git commit dash m. And what we're going to do is use the issue number at the start. So we'll write a hash 11. And what that is going to do is it's going to link to that issue in the commit. So we can easily see what this uh, specific commit is um, working on. So we will just add the issue number there and then describe what we did. So I'm just going to say added E2E test. And we're going to now push that up. But the first time we push a new branch, because we've created a new branch locally, but that branch doesn't exist in our remote repository, we are going to need to set the upstream. So we'll say git push dash dash set dash upstream origin and then the branch name which is jm-11 okay so that has pushed everything up now so what we're going to do at this stage is jump back into our remote repository uh, if we want we could just go check that that branch has been pushed we're on the main branch now but i can now switch to jm11 if i wanted and we would be able to find that new commit in there you can see we have here the issue number, number 11, added E2E test, and we can click on that, and it's going to take us to that specific issue. 
And what we'll do at this stage in the project management process is come back to our Kanban board here. And now that we've finished the testing portion, we're going to move this card over to the code column to indicate that we're working on the actual code to satisfy the test now. Now this might seem a bit tedious with such a simple example, but generally uh, you might be working on this stage for a while and it's going to be good to have an overview of everything that is currently being worked on, especially if you do have multiple people who are working on this project. Okay, so now we're going to jump back into our code and we're just going to satisfy this test. So to do that, we're going to open up our home page and we already have a hello message. We're just going to add a goodbye message as well. I'm going to save that. And then we're just going to run our tests again to make sure they pass. So again, I'll run npm run e2e. We will run that spec file again. And hopefully this time we see that they both pass. And great, we can see that both of the tests are passing now, which means that our work on this issue is done. So what we want to do is add that code to our branch. Again, we can check that we're on the correct branch by first running git status. And we can see that we've changed the home page. So then we're just going to run git add all. And with a commit message this time, we are going to add something slightly different. We are going to say closes and then the issue number. So closes number 11 and we'll just say added goodbye text. So what this is going to do is automatically uh, close the issue in GitHub when we push this back to the repo, or rather when we merge this uh, branch back into the main branch. And we also have an automation set up for our Kanban board that will automatically move an issue to the done, uh, to the done column when an issue is closed. So you would want to do this if you're finished work and you wanna move it to the done column, but if you had something else in your process, if that was some kind of code review that you wanted to do first, or maybe you want to move this to the refactor column, you might keep this issue open and just push your completed changes back without closing the issue. But we are pretty sure we're done here. So we're going to close that issue and we are going to push it back. So now again, if we jump back to our project here, uh, we would be able to see any changes that we just pushed in. So we can switch to that JM11 branch and we would be able to go into the home page, and we can see it contains that goodbye text. If we uh, go to our issues, you'll see that the goodbye message issue is still open. And in the project, it is still in the code column because we haven't uh, merged that back into the main branch yet. So again, this depends on what exactly you want to do. Uh, if you are going to immediately merge back into main, then you would probably just leave this issue here because it's going to get automatically moved to done anyway. But if you're not going to merge right now, you would probably move this somewhere else. So you might move it to refactor or even to done, depending on what you want to do. And as I briefly mentioned, you might even have additional columns. You might have a code review column that you could move this to as well if you had other team members or someone else reviewing your code before it's merged. So we're going to leave the issue here and we're just going to merge back into the main branch right away. So to do that, we are going to first go back to our main branch. So we're going to run git checkout main and you can see in the home page above our goodbye message has disappeared because we're on the main branch now. And we just wanna make sure that the main branch is still up to date because we could be working with other people or we might've just worked on other things ourselves. So we want to make sure the thing we're merging into is in a sort of fresh and clean and updated state. So we switch to main and run git pull. And then we're going to switch back to our branch. So we'll run git checkout jm-11. And what we're going to do here is rebase our branch with the main branch. Now there are different strategies for merging that you could use. So if there's something you prefer, some people don't like using rebase, that's fine. Just do whatever makes the most sense for you. But what we're going to do is run git rebase main. And what this is going to do is take any changes from the main branch and then it is going to replay your commits on top of that uh, recent update. So rebase will basically behave as if we had just got a fresh copy of the main branch and we're just all at once putting all of our changes into the main branch. Since we didn't have any changes to main, there isn't actually anything to add back on top of it. We're already all up to date and ready to merge. 
So what we're going to do now is switch back to main once more. So we're on git checkout main, and now we are going to merge our branch into main. So we will run git merge jm-11. So that is going to take uh, all of the updates we added to our um, feature branch or our issue branch that we created, and it's going to add them into the main branch. Hopefully that can all just happen automatically, but sometimes there will be conflicts that you need to deal with. And then we are just going to push that code back up to the remote repository. So now if we go back to GitHub again, now we can see that that message uh, or that issue rather has automatically been closed and it's automatically been moved to the done column. So now we would just repeat this process over and over again. Any new work that we want to do would be added as an issue. That issue is going to be pulled into the backlog. We're gonna take from this backlog, pop it into the test column, write our test, move it to the code column, write the code, finish the feature and have it moved to either the refactor or the done column. Now, if we did decide that some particular work wasn't finished or it needed changing, we could just open, reopen any of these issues that are in the done column. And that's going to put it back into the backlog automatically for us. And then we might move it to the refactor column and do some more work on that. So if you haven't read it already, it's going to be very important to read the tutorial I link uh, to set up this whole process because there is a few things that you need to do. And it's also going to help give you a broader understanding of why we are doing certain things certain ways, what the benefits are and that kind of thing. And another important thing to note is that you don't have to do things exactly as I have. You can just use this as a general guide. I've kept things pretty simple here, just keeping the sort of core basics of the process that I think are good. Um, but that really is ultimately just my opinion and what makes sense with the way that I work and the way I view things. So you can use this as a base, as a guide, but ultimately change it to suit whatever you want to do or whatever your team wants to do. But whatever process you do come up with, make sure that you do stick to whatever process you decide on. Otherwise, there isn't really much point in doing it in the first place. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.